Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's round 2. Here are the current standings after 16 rounds. Leela is in first place with 10 out of 16, Stockfish second, and the development version of Leela, T60, is currently in fifth with 8 points. Mostly the draws, managed to win a game against Toflays, but also lost the reverse game. It was a crazy line in the Budapest defense. Pretty much unbalanced opening and I usually don't review games where one side, white or black, uh, wins both games. So, development version Leela in 5th and main Leela, the stronger Leela, is in 1st at the moment. And this game is uh, Leela versus Stoflays, game 48. And we have E4, E5 and now after Knight F3. We have this craziness with f5, the Latvian gambit. Now, I usually, as I mentioned, I don't uh, make videos of these uh, crazy unbalanced openings, but actually Lila managed to hold this with black in the reverse game. So let's see what happened with Lila playing white here. So f5 is, uh, is not very good. I just made a video in the King's Gambit uh, where... Um, I mentioned that the king's gambit is not so great for white because it gives up a pawn and weakens the, the king. But now in this game we have the same thing, but this time black plays the king's gambit uh, a tempo down. So this is even more crazier. Not really recommended at all unless you want to, to have some fun. Here white can, uh, can take both of these pawns on, uh, on e5 and f5. Taking on f5 is the worst. Uh, of the two captures because here black can play e4 chase this knight away from here and this is pretty much what black wants to to achieve actually in this opening he will eventually play d5 and probably will uh, will, will take back the spawn on f5 it's much better for white to actually take on e5 because this now comes with a serious threat of queen h5 check winning even more material for example if black plays something bad here like knight c6 then after queen h5, black is pretty much toast. First of all, if the king moves, then after queen f7, uh, the king gets mated. After uh, king here, knight c4, king c5, and now queen d5 check, king b4. And after a3 and uh, b3, the king is mated. So uh, this is not good. Black has to play here g6, but this is also not good because now this knight can take. And this pawn on h7 is pinned to this rook. Here, best uh, the best try for black is knight f6, hitting this queen. But after queen h3, this uh, rook is still hanging. And uh, after rook g8, now white can take here. After rook takes, white can actually win another pawn. And black doesn't really have anything in return. So white is much better here. So black has to be careful. There are two moves that are relatively good here. Knight f6 and queen f6. Both guarding against the queen coming out here. In this game we have queen f6. Not only developing, but also hitting this uh, knight on e5. And in this opening, it's very important not only to develop and defend, but also attack. Try to, to develop with great energy. And uh, they are both trying to, to put their kings into safety as soon as possible. Queen f6 attacks this knight. We have d4. And right out of the opening, Lila evaluates this at plus 1.6 for white. And Stoflace pretty much agrees plus 1.2. So it's not a really good opening for black. Let's see what happened. Here, Stoflace played d6 now to chase this knight away. And now he takes this, his uh, pawn back. But now comes knight c3, attacking this pawn, and Stoflays played queen g6. Not only defending the pawn, but also putting pressure on g2 and not allowing this bishop to come out so um, easily. So we can see that they are both trying to, to cause problems to the opponent and uh, prevent them from uh, developing harmoniously. What can Y do now? Well, Lila played a very strong move here, f3 threatening to take on, on e4 and taking on f3 is not good for black because after queen takes on f3 the g2 pawn is now defended and white is threatening bishop d3 with tempo on the queen and uh, bishop f5 is, is not really good because of 
queen takes on b7 and black loses this rook so um, taking this pawn is not good uh, also after bishop d3 coming out with tempo white will castle very very shortly and this black king will be toast on the open e5 so instead of taking the pawn stoflays actually played knight f6 but now lila took on e4 and it's very very difficult for black to to take this pawn if knight takes here then this knight will be pretty much lost after bishop d3 now this knight is in a pin and uh, if bishop f5 trying to break the pin then after queen f3 the knight is lost uh, d5 doesn't work because of knight takes and uh, if knight c3 then bishop can take here first attack the queen and then white will recapture also on c3 so this is not good taking on e4 is not good but then lila has a very very strong center now we have bishop e7 and stoflace is just one move away from castling but now came e5 attacking this knight which doesn't have good squares to go to and um, now after knight e4 which is pretty much the only reasonable move here for black lila now played queen f3 again developing with great energy also attacking this knight and also preventing short castling here if stoflace plays rook f8 not now because the knight is hanging but let's say at the next move well then he won't be able to short castle anymore we have bishop h4 check now uh, stoflace pretty much has to go all in because uh, if knight takes here then after bishop d3 again this uh, queen is attacked with tempo and uh, the best move here for for stoflace would actually be queen g4 but if they exchange queens after b takes on c3 uh, there's no more pressure on the white king and white is just uh, material up so this is not an option here uh, stoflace pretty much has to uh, to go all in here and we have now bishop h4 check but this now after g3 loses uh, the knight but we have bishop g3 check and king e2 or king d1 not very good because then uh, white loses the queen so king d2 is uh, pretty much forced here and now we have rook f8 so there will be no more short castling for stoflace but he has at least an initiative for the invested material let's see if it's enough we have now queen e4 trying to get a key queen exchange again but rook f2 check and the black has initiative lila continued here now with bishop e2 but now came bishop f5 so stoflace continues very energetically he has uh, four pieces in the attack but now he loses the b7 pawn and pretty much also the rook what can stoflace do here if uh, queen g4 now to, to threaten to take here then lila can simply play king d1 here and after queen takes play knight d2 and she would have everything under control there's no way to increase the pressure now on white and this rook is still hanging so not good instead of queen g4 we have pawn takes on e5 hoping that uh, after the queen takes here with pawn takes on d4 uh, he can create even more threats against the white king but lila didn't take the rook instead she take on e5 with the knight hitting the queen stoflace took out the knight and now after pawn takes the queen could actually go to c6 to save the rook but again exchanging the queens is not really good for stoflace as his material down here after king e1 uh, white has a, uh, an extra piece and uh, a winning position so instead of queen c6 we have knight c6 so stoflace loses the rook but at least he can bring another piece into the attack and now taking the rook with check of course is good for lila but she preferred to play king e1 and unpin this bishop and now if whatever the rook moves uh, bishop h5 would follow winning this uh, queen so stoflace is pretty much forced now to take out this bishop we have knight takes and now rook b8 so the rook is saved but this king is uh, still in trouble here in the center of the board we have queen takes on c7 now rook c8 and now queen d6 going again for the queen exchange being material up we have now queen g4 and e6 threatening mating two 
So the bishop has to take the pawn. And now we have rook f1, threatening mate now on f8 with the rook. Queen h4 check, rook f2. Queen h1 check, rook f1. Queen h4 check again. And here Lila could avoid the repetition with king d1 since... Um, Rook d8 is not really winning this queen because of rook f8 mating, so that's not possible. But instead of king d1, Lila preferred to, to go into a winning endgame and went for this queen exchange with queen g3. We have queen takes, knight takes, and now knight b4 hitting uh, c2 and threatening to, to win the exchange. Lila says, fine, take my rook. She played king d2 and now after knight takes and rook takes. She lost the exchange but she still has a knight. She has a knight for a pawn and pretty much winning endgame here. We have now rook c4, bishop e5, g6, rook e1. And uh, Lila now will uh, proceed on, uh, on stopping the advancement on, of these pawns by guarding the dark squares. We now have knight e4, king d7, b3, rook back. And now bishop f6, taking away these squares from the pawns. Bishop f5, knight c3, a6, rook e7 check. And now after some more moves and uh, checks, Lila will be able to actually exchange the rooks here after rook d6 and rook d5. The rook exchange is inevitable. We have king takes. And now without the rooks, Lila's king can try to, to get to the g6 pawn. We have king e3, but the black king, of course, prevents that. Bishop d8, king f5, knight e4. And <clears throat> Stoflays will now try to advance those kingside pawns. Lila will, of course, try to, um, to guard the dark squares and prevent that. We have some more moves, and then knight c5, king g4, king f2, king f5. And eventually, they will both advance their pawns. We have a3 and now g5. King e3 and h4, knight e4, bishop e6, and after b4 we have h3, and now Lila's uh, bishop will get back to this diagonal to uh, stop the pawns. Bishop b5, bishop h2, a4, and now g4, and we can see that Lila has a complete control of the dark squares here, and she wants to, to play king f4 and take the g4 pawn, also attack a6 with the knight, and uh, combine these threats with uh, b5, creating a passed pawn. Bishop g3, king f5, and now king f4 is possible, but Lila is not in a hurry. She first tries to, um, to get with this king to the a6 pawn, but uh, the, the bishop prevents that, and now the king chases the bishop a bit, and uh, eventually, after uh, some more moves, Lila will uh, try again to get to f4 with the king. We have uh, king e3 now, king g5, king f2, king e3, bishop f1, knight e6 check, king f6. And uh, after some more moves, the black king will go to g5, allowing Lila to e5. And now after king h4, we have finally king f4 attacking this pawn. King h5 now, bishop g3, bishop c6, knight e4, king g6. And now she takes the g4 pawn. And uh, from here on it's easier. And uh, Lila actually sacrifices the knight because of the bishop takes and king c5 now. b5 of course is unstoppable and then these pawns will uh, become queens. We have bishop back. b5, king f3. And of course, Lila's uh, dark square bishop will be able to sack itself for the h pawn at any point. So uh, we have now b7, and uh, this bishop check is forced. Stoflace has to take the pawn. And now we have a6, and the a pawn will become a queen. After which, mate will follow very soon. We have now queen h3 giving up the bishop. Lila likes to, to give up material in the endings in order to get into this familiar uh, endgame with uh, queen and king, which she can win very, very easily. And this is now the end of the game. A very, very interesting game in this crazy Latvian gambit, which is not recommended at all. I would like to thank to Rene, Adolf, Barry and everyone else who donated to my channel. 
Also visit the store. I have a store now. You can find t-shirts, mugs, uh, stickers and hoodies and all kind of stuff. So check that out and also view two of my other videos here on the right. Please subscribe, like and share and thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.